Hi, Mary, Maeve, and Karen. How are you? All right. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Nikki. How are you? Great to meet all of you. Thanks for uh, taking time out for Glitter Magazine. Um, so congratulations on Joan Baez, I Am Noise, a phenomenal documentary film. Uh, enjoyed every second of it. So I wanted to start by asking you what brought you all together to direct, to co-direct this biopic and what was your individual history uh, with Joan for each of you? Uh, Mary and I have worked together making documentary films, Nikki, for over 20 years um, and then worked with Maeve, our co-director and editor on a film before this about transgender kids for Frontline. And then uh, we came together, the three of us, to make this film, Joan Baez, I Am a Noise, um, and sort of asked Maeve to step in um, with Mary and me. Maeve had done some films on her own, but this, uh, but this was our first three co-director project. I've known Joan for over 30 years. We have a, a personal history. So that was an opening to, um, to do a different kind of biopic given, given the kind of personal history. Joan was talking about potentially a last tour. And so we thought there was something interesting about following a woman who had been famous for over 60 years coming to the end of her music career. So we all came together and figured out, hmm, what do we, how do we, how do, how do we make this a, a kind of unconventional biopic, but something that, um, that would be, um, you know, a kind of legacy for Joan at the same time. Yeah. We also liked the idea of having the three of us together, Maeve, is an editor, so we were able to, uh, unusually, she came on the road with us, we were able to edit as we were going and look at stuff and, and consider how we wanted to do it. There was a, a massive amount of material, as you can imagine. Um, so I had done a, a lot of digging into the archive in a big way, and Karen had a kind of deep history with Joan that brought a level of intimacy and honesty to the film and the ability for us to kind of push through, uh, you know, her, her, her presented self, as Karen always says, um, to a kind of deeper, more raw inside look at her. Absolutely. Um, and Maeve, did you want to add to that at all? No, I was just, I, I had um, co-directed a film before this in Ireland, and um, my career has predominantly been in editing, and so I was absolutely delighted that Karen and Mary um, took a chance on me to join them uh, on this Joan journey, which it has been a big adventure for us for a good six, six, seven years now. So it's, it's, it's been, it's been great. Mm -hmm. And, and Joan grappled uh, throughout this, we see she grappled with fame and privilege, racism, mental health. How long did you work on the documentary with her? And did you originally think she was going to reveal as much as she did? I think when we started the film, uh, we weren't thinking like that, actually. We thought we were going to do more of a verite film, following her over her final tour, looking at aging and decisions about how you when to stop, and, and didn't actually know we were going to do such a biographical look at her as well, and personal memoirish look. I think that happened over, over time, in part due to Karen's relationship with her and in part she gave us the keys to her storage room and we opened up her storage unit and we're like <laughs> you know there's this vast amount of material and deep look at an individual um that was much much more intimate than than i don't know than we had that we had known about her her past or than i had known sort of and I think it was, um, Joan was ready, probably, Nikki, as never before at that point in her life. We first, she was in her late 70s when we started. She's now 82. That um, she, as she described it, she wanted to leave an honest legacy. And so this was an opportunity because of our history and relationship to kind of do the definitive piece of her life. And so I think, though it shifted over time, um, uh, she, she too was ready to kind of go to places where she hadn't been before in terms of revealing, not just not just the psychiatric history, but everything, you know, from okay. the breakup with Dylan to the loss of fame, to the um, guilt of motherhood, to the sibling rivalry, to all those things that 
for me, it's rare to find in a, in a celebrity biopic. I mean, I think there is, it's fair enough to say that Joan is kind of, her candor uh, is really kind of unusual and remarkable in every way. And I think that's a credit to where she is in her life as well. And just a confidence in who she is now and what she, how she's experienced her life. Um, and so that was an opening for us. Also her present day stuff. I think she, the vulnerability of talking about the struggle with her voice and how mm. hard it is to keep that going and the road as your body is aging and all of that kind of stuff, which was, you know, kind of amazing for her to talk about in such an honest way. Especially yeah. when, I mean, you look at those photos of all of them, her sisters, all of them, they're kind of, I mean, she is this, as she describes it, walking history, whether it's with Dr. King or Vietnam or James Baldwin or whatever it is, but also to see these, this, she was a symbol of the youth culture as well, that whole period of the, the kind of 60s. And so to see a woman aging um, without, you know, with a different kind of beauty over time without, with letting us see her, her wrinkles and not makeup and things like that. I think it's also um, certainly been the response to the film with other women seeing that how rare that is to see um, on the screen now, just somebody actually, you know, over time um, and, um, and her comfort with letting us do that and her confidence I think was also um, just a way to do aging without a heavy hand just to actually see somebody over time um, and her comfort or confidence in letting us in in those ways was also kind of amazing. Yeah, it was absolutely beautiful to receive that as a viewer. Um, the whole film was just seamless and peaceful, delicate, powerful. You handled her story with such care. It gives me chills. I mean, even watching this, I was moved to the point where I had to pause it so many times <laughs> in, in a very like um, positive way though. It's just the care that you took in uh, putting this together. Um, so especially how some of the present day interviews merge into the flashback archival footage so seamlessly, um, you know, what was the decision process like in, in, in laying all of this out with the animation and the poetry the journaling um, you know, why did you decide to do it that way? That I think was the gift of the collaboration. Part of it is the brilliance of Maeve's editing, all of us, and a shared sensibility, I think, from the top that, that we wanted it to be seamless. We wanted it to feel like this kind of dream, almost dreamscape where you merge the past and present and the transitions were kind of seamless. Um, so I think we all wanted it to be impressionistic and sort of cinematic without it sounding highfalutin where we could where all these elements would come together and you the past and present would merge but um i think it was our three shared sensibilities that you see and then a huge part is maves that's what i found great um i i was just gonna say like we used the word visual memoir and that was a really useful word to kind of as an anchor to kind of um, guide us through I mean I think we wanted it to feel seamless we wanted it to feel like she was in the present in the car thinking back into the past and those two two things were always happening kind of almost simultaneously and a lot of that was driven by the extraordinary archive that we found in the storage unit because it was so immersive and that was a really great moment for all of us because it kind of unlocked a key for us in, 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 in the sense of you know, being able to use something so 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 amazing, like the letters, the 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 home movies, all the all, all the 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 therapy tapes, the her incredible artwork, and so because because we found so much incredible material, we realized that you could absolutely immerse yourself as much as you possibly could in the sense that you would almost feel like you were journeying with her on the train from concert to concert back in the early '60s and whatever she was doing, and so it was just a really exciting kind of exploration for us to be able to dig right into that and bring it all to life and try as best we could to merge it seamlessly and I'm actually delighted you said that because that's a, a real compliment because that's what we were going for you know yeah you nailed it um <laughs> one last question uh you could make it as brief uh I know I have a just a few minutes left but um what do you hope the new generation coming up learns about Joan through this documentary or takes away from it and also why is it important for you as female filmmakers to tell Joan's story? And kind of a double question, but. 
small thing that we were just talking about is kind of her, the, her confidence in herself. Um, and even, even throughout, although she was an anxious kid, I think this ability to kind of project who she wants to be ahead of time to, to, to these audio tapes where she's, I can see myself leading thousands of people. I want to start a peace movement. This, this reaching that she was always doing in her life towards her ideals and who she wanted to be and standing, uh, you know, fulfilling that for herself, I found inspirational. Um, mm. And her settling, well, letting herself settle into who she is as she gets older, which includes settling into her new voice and s settling into her new body. And uh, I found that as, as a woman, just inspirational um, and hope other people do as well, I think. Um, me, me too and also we were I mean, we, we were talking earlier but just a bit little bit about the end of the film this is kind of this I, I think a last chapter like not a last chapter a chapter that opens up into like a whole new vista and that idea that the story continues you know as opposed to it being kind of the end of of of, 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 of anything it's just basically a whole new kind of um uh opportunity to think forward as opposed to the rest of the film which is kind of a little bit like looking back so i think that's also kind of a hopeful interesting way to, to finish off the film and i think for me i'm um, being struck by her candor all throughout uh, nikki just the being willing to be so vulnerable to be so unguarded to let people in on the kind of light and dark of her life and say this is what i've experienced um, it allows people to kind of relate in their own way to whatever they've gone through to see somebody famous talking about what the real inner world was like, what you look like on the outside, and this is what was happening on the inside. I think that's just um, an incredibly important humanizing thing to do, um, particularly with people who are famous. So I think it was, I don't know about you, but I've rarely seen somebody who's famous be so honest about everything. And so for me, that is just kind of also impressive. She's a, this authentic person who's kind of come through lots of things and, and she's willing to say, this is who I am. And this is what I went through. And I found that kind of moving and impressive. Fierceness. I mean, she is fiercely activist still, you know, her, her beliefs, her nonviolence, her empathy towards, uh, you know, others and the, her fight is still yeah she holds on to those beliefs and i hope you know i think that's she was doing it at 17 she's doing it at 80 it's you know. yeah well thank you ladies so much it has been a pleasure miri mabe and karen um keep doing what you're doing <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> thank you thanks so much okay